Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Most of us when we picture cats and dogs, we picture them being very different from one another, right? They look different, they act different, but both cats and dogs actually belong to the same order. They both belong to the order Carnivora. Now, what on earth does that mean? And how do we know how these different animals are related? Well, we use a little something called taxonomy, and that's exactly what we're going to be exploring today. So let's get into it. By definition, taxonomy is the scientific study of how we identify, describe, and classify organisms. And this is all a really complicated way of saying taxonomy is how we put animals into little groups based on how similar they are. And it's not just animals, it's actually plants and bacteria and all the living organisms in the world we can organize using taxonomy. Now, when we're looking at how we organize these different organisms, there's lots of things that we have to take into consideration. We have to look at their DNA, their genetics to see how closely related they are. We look at things like their physical appearance. What traits do they have in common? We look at their behaviors. Do they have any behaviors that make them similar or different? So all these different things we have to take into account when we're trying to figure out which group to put each organism in. Taxonomic groups are then organized in something called a taxonomic hierarchy, which kind of looks like an upside down pyramid. So at the top, at the widest section of the upside down pyramid, that is where the groups are the most broad. Organisms in those groups are not that closely related. But the further you go down the pyramid towards the point, that's when we find organisms becoming more similar, being more closely related, until we get to the bottom of the pyramid where we have our very, very, very closely related organisms. I'm going to go very quickly through our different levels of the taxonomic hierarchy so you guys can get more of an understanding of just how broad or how narrow these different groups are. So if we start at the top, which we call our domain, these are our broadest groups. This is where we're going to be separating things like plants and animals from things like bacteria. We go one step more narrow. Now we're in our kingdoms. This is where we're going to separate our animals from our plants. This is where we get the name animal kingdom from. One step below that, we have our phylums, and now we're gonna focus mostly on the animal kingdom, just so we can see how these groups narrow. So in the animal kingdom, the phylums are actually what's gonna separate our vertebrates, our animals with a backbone, from our invertebrates, our animals that don't have a backbone. And now we're gonna focus mostly on our vertebrates. Below phylum, we have our classes. And for our vertebrates, some of the classes we might have are mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Now focusing mostly on our mammal class, below class, we have our orders. And within the mammal class, we have orders like carnivora, primates, rodents, and bats. This is where we're going to start separating different groups of mammals. One step below order, we have our families. And now in the carnivora order, some examples of families might be the cat family, the dog family, the bear family, or the hyena family. One step beneath family is going to be our genus. Now genus is actually the first word of the organism's scientific name. So now we're getting really narrow with our groups. We're gonna look at the cat family. Some of the genuses that we might find in the cat family are Panthera, our big cats, Puma, which is our mountain lion, or Lynx, which also includes the Lynx and the Bobcat. One step below genus is going to be our species name. Now this is the second word of an animal's scientific name. And if we're looking at Panthera, which we said was our genus of big cats, some examples of species in that might be tigers, lions, or leopards. Now our final stop in the taxonomic hierarchy, our most narrow level, is going to be our subspecies. This is gonna be the third word of an animal's scientific name if they have one. Not every animal has subspecies. 
So if I'm looking at a tiger species, they do have several subspecies, including the Sumatran tiger, the Amur tiger, and the Bengal tiger. Now, I just mentioned an organism's scientific name, and if you want to learn more about scientific names, be sure to check out our lesson on scientific names, but I wanted to include that because by looking at an organism's scientific name and comparing it to the taxonomic hierarchy, we actually can figure out where that animal fits. Is it a subspecies? Is it a species? Or is it just a general genus? And if it is, a species, what other organisms might share that genus? That's going to tell us who they're closely related to. So we can learn a lot about an organism just by looking at their taxonomy or their scientific name, but something really important for us to remember is science is always changing because we as humans are always learning. We're developing new technology that allow us to test DNA that we couldn't test before. So it does happen that we have an organism who used to be classified in this taxonomic way, but is now classified in a different taxonomic way now that we know more about that animal and who it's related to. Learning about an organism's taxonomy is a really important way that we can learn about that organism and its relatives. So I'm so glad we were able to take the opportunity today to go down that path. Now, if you want to test your knowledge on taxonomy, do a couple activities and projects, be sure to check out our Educating Adventures website. The link is below. We've got a ton of resources for you there about taxonomy and a ton of other science topics. Make sure you hit that like subscribe button and we will see you guys next time.